السابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So we've been doing this book الركائز العشر The Ten Foundations in regards to التحصيل العلمي in regards to acquiring knowledge Ten foundations in regards to acquiring knowledge. And we've done the first six so far. The first one was al isti'anatu billahi azza wa jal. Seeking aid and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seeking knowledge. Seeking aid and assistance from Allah in seeking knowledge because a person is weak and has no might nor power to do anything without the aid and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person depended upon himself relied upon himself only, then he would be wasted. He would never be able to accomplish anything. So the first affair that was mentioned here in acquiring knowledge was seeking aid and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one we had mentioned was husnun niyyah having a sincere intention, having a righteous, good, sincere, and pure intention in seeking knowledge. That a person does it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person does not seek knowledge for the sake of people to turn their heads towards him, to be given status or position or elevation. But a person seeks knowledge sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely desiring to learn his religion, to remove ignorance from himself and to remove ignorance from others thereafter and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon basirah, upon insight and knowledge. Thirdly, at-tadarra' ila Allah ta'ala wa su'aluhu at-tawfiqa wa sadaq. That a person constantly returns <coughs> returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dua, asking Allah for success in his affairs. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success in seeking knowledge, asking Allah to strengthen his memory, asking Allah to strengthen his understanding and comprehension, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up the affairs for him in this act of seeking knowledge. And so a person utilizes the opportunities in making dua when it is most likely to be answered. And it was mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his prophet to make dua for an increase in knowledge. When it mentioned, وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا And say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. 
increase me in knowledge. That is what the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to make dua for. And if Allah commanded the Messenger to make dua for that, for seeking knowledge or increasing knowledge, then this highlights the most important thing is that knowledge. If there was something more important, more important than the Messenger would have been told, to make dua for that more important thing. But the messenger was told to make dua for an increase in knowledge. This highlights the great importance of knowledge. And so Allah said to the messenger, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا O oh Allah, increase me. O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Similarly, there had been the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he said, Rabbi habli hukman wa alhiqni bis salihin. My Lord, grant me knowledge and join me along with the righteous. O oh Allah, grant me knowledge. Rabbi habli hukman al hukm yani al ilm. O oh Allah, my Lord, grant me knowledge, Ibrahim alayhi salam mentioned. And it is said about Ibn Abbas that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him. Allahumma faqqihhu fi al-deen wa allimhu al-ta'wil. O oh Allah, give him knowledge of the religion and understanding of interpretation, the interpretation of the Qur'an. The fourth was Salah al Qalb, the righteousness of the heart. Salah al Qalb. Because the Shaykh had mentioned the author, as Shaykh Abdullah al Zahiri, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, because the heart, he said, is the container for your knowledge, it is the vessel that contains your knowledge within it. And so if that vessel, that container is not sound, then it will not be able to maintain and keep that knowledge. If the container or the vessel is not sound, then it will not be able to retain that knowledge. So righteousness of the heart is a very important affair for the one who strives to seek knowledge. And that is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضَغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ that indeed in the body there is a morsel of flesh, a body part, that if it is righteous, if it is upright, then the whole of the body will be upright. And if it is corrupt, then the whole of the body will become corrupt. And that is the heart. So righteousness and rectification of the heart is a very important affair for the one who desires to seek knowledge and to gain knowledge. And a person must stay away from those things that corrupt your heart, that take away the righteousness of your heart. يَتَجَنَّبْ مُفْسِدَاتِ الْقَلْبِ وَأَمْرَاضَ that a person has to stay away from the things that corrupt your heart and the diseases of the heart. فَإِنَّهَا إِنْ وُجِدَتْ فِي الْقَلْبِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ حَمْلَ الْعِلْمِ Because if they are found within the heart, those affairs that corrupt your heart, if they are found within it, 
then you will not be able to carry knowledge. You will not be able to maintain and retain any knowledge, understand any knowledge, if your heart is corrupt. And so how does a person rectify his heart? It is through recognizing and learning the names and attributes of Allah. Recognizing and learning who your Lord is. Thinking about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pondering over the Quran and the meanings of it. And prostrating and praying plentifully to Allah. Praying in the night prayer. Focusing on your worship. All of these things are a means to the rectification of the heart. Then the fifth thing, or the fifth point that we had covered was al-dhaka. Wal-dhaka yakunu jabillah wa yakunu muktasaban. Intelligence. A person needs to have intelligence, smartness, to be able to seek knowledge. You need to be able to look at the evidences and work them out and understand them and comprehend them. You need to be able to look at the rulings of the religion, the fiqh, and to be able to work it out and understand it. It requires a level of intelligence from a person to be able to understand knowledge and to memorize and learn that knowledge. So having that intelligence is an important thing. Some people perhaps they are naturally intelligent. Perhaps they are naturally intelligent. They have that smartness and intelligence to them. And others perhaps you need to train yourself through practice and through persistence with this knowledge until you become more intelligent. Perhaps at the beginning it is difficult for you to understand the evidences, difficult to understand the ayat and how it's a proof for this or a proof for that, and how this ruling works or that ruling works. Maybe it is difficult at the beginning, but a person continues to train himself upon knowledge and looking and studying and learning and researching until you become more accustomed to it and you become more familiar with it and your level of understanding and comprehension and intelligence regarding it improves and increases so that when you see the issues you can understand them much quicker and much easier in future as time goes by. So having that <coughs> intelligence, that is something important also. Sadisan, and remember as the Shaykh had mentioned regarding that, it's not just about being smart, but it's about being smart and intelligent with the application of it in the right way. Because the Shaykh had mentioned the philosophers, some of those philosophers were very smart, some of those philosophers and their logic and their reasoning and the way they spoke, they could confuse the people easily. They had speech that appeared to be eloquent and smart and intelligent, but in reality that intelligence led them nowhere, only to self-destruction. So intelligence placed in the right way, in obedience to Allah and to this religion is beneficial not just intelligence that misguides a person like the philosophers and their likes. Sixthly, this was the last thing we had covered previously, before the break. Al-Hirsu ala tahseel al-ilm sababun li tahseelihi wa li'anati Allah ta'ala lah. That striving to seek knowledge, when you put that striving and effort into it, then that becomes a means 
to gaining the aid of Allah for you. That you need to strive yourself and you need to push yourself and put the effort in to seeking knowledge. And if you do that, then you will see that there is aid and assistance for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, Inna Allah ma'al ladheena attaqaw wa ladheena hum muhsinoon. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who have taqwa, those who fear Him have piety, and those who are the good doers, the righteous ones, the muhsinoon. Allah is with those people. فَعَلَى طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ الْحِرْصُ الشَّدِيدِ عَلَى حِرْضِ الْعِلْمِ وَفَهْمِ So it is upon the student of knowledge to exert a lot of effort and a lot of striving into memorizing knowledge and understanding it. وَمُجَالَسَةِ الْعُلَمَ وَالتَّلَقِّ عَنْهُمْ And the person needs to strive to sit with the scholars and to gain knowledge from them. A person must strive to sit with the scholars and to take knowledge from them. وَيَحْرُسُ عَلَى كَثْرَةِ الْقِرَاءَةِ and he needs to strive and put time into reading a lot. وَاسْتِغْلَالِ عُمْرِهِ وَأَوْقَاتِهِ And utilizing his time, uh, his life and his time. وَيَكُونُ شَحِيحًا جِدًّا عَلَى وَقْتِهِ And he needs to be extremely miserly when it comes to his time. Do not allow your time to be taken by useless affairs. Do not allow your time to be taken in things that do not benefit you, with people that are not going to benefit you. Utilize your time and be very miserly with it. Do not give it away to anywhere, to anything, to any issue. Only give that time to knowledge and to that which will benefit you in this world and the afterlife. That is a recap of what we already covered previously. Today then, we start on the new one, which is number seven. Al-Jiddu wal وَالْمُثَابَرَةُ عَلَى التَّحْصِيلِ الْعِلْمِ الْجِدُّ وَالْإِشْتِهَادُ That is striving and hard work. الْجِدُّ وَالْإِشْتِهَادُ وَالْمُثَابَرَةُ Perseverance. Perseverance in acquisition of knowledge. الْجِدُّ وَالْإِشْتِهَادُ وَالْمُثَابَرَةُ عَلَى التَّحْصِيلِ الْعِلْمِ Earnestness, striving and perseverance in acquisition of knowledge. Think about those affairs. Earnestness, that you're serious about things. Striving and perseverance. Because knowledge does not come quickly and easily. It comes slowly over time. So it requires perseverance from a person. Requires that long-term effort and striving. وَالِبْتِعَادْ عَنِ الْكَسَلْ وَالْعَجْزِ And that the person must distance himself from laziness and feebleness. Distance himself from laziness and feebleness. وَمُجَاهَدَةُ النَّفْسِ وَالشَّيْطَانِ 
and the person <coughs> must strive, strive against the shaitan and against his own soul. For indeed, فالنفس والشيطان مثبطان عن طلب العلم Because your own self, your soul and the shaitan, they prevent or discourage from seeking knowledge. The shaitan attempts to discourage you from seeking knowledge, your own soul desires ease and relaxation and knowledge is not ease and relaxation knowledge takes effort and time and traveling and hardship and so your soul desires ease and relaxation and comfort therefore discouraging you from treading upon the path of knowledge and the shaitan of course attempts to distract you and discourage you away from seeking knowledge وَمِنَ الْأَسْبَابِ الْمُعِينَةِ عَلَى الْإِجْتِهَادِ فِي الطَّلَبِ and from the means that help a student to strive in seeking knowledge قِرَاءَةُ تَرَاجِمِ الْعُلَمَى reading the biographies of the scholars وَصَدْرِهِمْ وَتَحَمُّلِهِمْ and looking at their patience and endurance وَرِحَلَاتِهِمْ فِي تَحْصِيلِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْحَدِيثِ and their journeys in the acquisition of knowledge and hadith <coughs> in regards to this the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge and say, it is mentioned in a hadith, the messenger would seek refuge and say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from weakness and laziness and cowardice and from senile old age. The messenger used to seek refuge with Allah, asking Allah to protect him from these things, from weakness, from laziness, from cowardice, from senile old age. And I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave, and I seek refuge with you from the trial and affliction of life and death. Six things mentioned here. Six things in this hadith, which is in Al Bukhari, that the Messenger used to ask Allah to protect him from. From the weakness, from the laziness, from the cowardice, from the senile old age, from the punishment of the grave, and from the trials of life and death. Six things the Messenger used to make dua asking Allah to protect him from falling into. And perhaps the main point here is that the Messenger used to seek refuge asking Allah to protect him from weakness and laziness. Weakness and laziness discourages a person from seeking knowledge weakness and laziness prevents a person from learning his religion as well as the trials of life the various trials of life can be something that prevents or discourages a person from seeking knowledge so the messenger used to make dua asking Allah to protect him from these things so as Shaykh Abdullah Zahiri mentions so the student must have determination and firm resolve upon acquiring knowledge just as the Salaf did. And they traveled great distances, country to country, to sit with the scholars 
and they would not leave a scholar from a particular land except that they traveled to him. The affair therefore requires determination, hard work, and traveling to the scholars. That is the end of what the Sheikh mentioned there. So you see here, a Sheikh Abdullah Zahiri, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, highlighting the important affairs that a student of knowledge needs to focus on. He needs to make sure he has a strong level of determination in seeking knowledge. And that he has firm resolve. Not that he has weakness in him, he does it for a day or two or a week or two and that's it. Even a month or two and that's it. But he has firm resolve, determination. That he has goals and objectives. I want to do this and I want to do that. I want to memorize this many hadith and I want to memorize that much of this or that. And he has focus and targets and goals and he perseveres to reach those goals. Because a person, because a person who does not, then if Allah gives you life, perhaps you will end up at 60 years old or 70 years old and you have memorized nothing of the religion. You still cannot explain the basics of the religion. And that is because a person for the rest of his life, earlier in life perhaps, had the opportunity but he didn't put in the effort and didn't have that determination, didn't have that firm resolve, and so he ends up not ever learning the religion. And so the Shaykh said, determination, firm resolve, just as the Salaf did, and they traveled great distances. Traveling to seek knowledge is also something that a student of knowledge focuses on whenever he is able, whenever he is uh, capable of doing so, that he travels to sit with the scholars, travels to sit with the ulama, just as the Salaf they did. And the Shaykh mentions that the Salaf never left any of the scholars, except that they used to go travel to them. If you read the biographies of the Salaf, they used to travel. Imagine one of them lived in Medina. They would travel to Mecca. They would travel to Iraq, to Baghdad, and to Kufa and Basra. They would travel all around to Egypt and other places, all around that Arabian Peninsula. In those days, over a thousand years ago, on their camels and their donkeys and their horses in the desert and the heat, and they would travel hundreds and hundreds of miles, more than that, to go and visit the scholars and learn from them. So traveling to go and meet with the scholars, the ulama, going to the countries where the scholars are, to sit with them, to learn from them, that is a goal and an objective a student of knowledge should have. It is not enough just to sit here. A person should have that long-term goal that I want to be able to go one day to benefit from the scholars, to sit with them, to learn, to do some books, to study, even if it is a short period of time, to have that objective and target and goal of wanting to go and see the scholars and meet with them. The Salaf, they did not used to leave any of them anywhere except that they used to go and travel to them. Then the eighth, the eighth issue that is mentioned here. The eighth foundation that the Sheikh highlights in the acquisition of knowledge. And that is Al Bulgha. Al Bulgha. This can have different meanings. Al Bulgha in basic terms, the attainment of the goals, achieving the targets, getting to the goals, al bulha <coughs> And this can be in different ways. It is possible that al bulha 
attaining the targets, achieving the goals, that can mean that a person frees up enough time in his life with his other responsibilities, frees up enough time to be able to study and to learn and to memorize and to read and to listen and benefit, puts aside enough time to reach his goals in knowledge. وَهِيَ أَنْ يُفَرِّغَ الطَّالِبَ أو الطالب غاية جهده حتى يبلغ مراده في العلم والقوة فيه حفظا وفهما وتقعيدا So that is that a student of knowledge sets aside his time to give the maximum amount of his effort so that he can reach his goals and his targets in knowledge. Until he reaches his goals and targets in knowledge and strength within that knowledge. In terms of his memorization, his understanding, and his comprehension of the principles and foundations. So this highlights that a person must exert his efforts to the greatest of his level until he reaches his goals in knowledge and strength therein in terms of his memorization, in terms of his understanding, in terms of establishing the foundations and principles of his religion. A person must strive for that goal Strive to understand and be upon knowledge in terms of your religion so that you are not just a, a, a blind follower or ignorant and simply relying upon people all the time to tell you this, to tell you that. That you strive yourself to learn and to become knowledgeable and be upon understanding of the religion and the rulings. So you have that goal. And you focus and strive to get to that goal. People have all of the goals that they have in life. They have all of their career goals that they're working towards. And they're thinking in two years I want to get to this position and my salary is going to be increased by so much. And then I'm going to work to get in five years to such and such management position. Then my salary will be such and such. People have all of those goals in life with their careers and they work for them. Every day they go into work and they've got that objective in mind. I want to work hard, I want to do this, I want to do that. Two years time, I want to be at the management level. Five years time, I want to be senior management. I want my salary to be so and so and they're working for it. And that's their goal. But if that's the way a person has his goals with his work, then you should have even stronger goals in your religion. That in two years time, imagine a person doesn't know any Qur'an for example and he makes a goal in two years time I want to have memorized five juz of the Qur'an. Somebody already knows five juz, he puts a goal down in a year I want to be at 20 juz. In two years I want to be half. Hasn't memorized any hadith, puts a goal down in six months I want to know 40 hadith of Nawawi and this and that. And you strive and work on those goals. If you don't have any objectives or goals like that, then you go through life pondering through or plodding through life and you're not making any progress. Where you were five years ago, that's how much Qur'an you know now, what you knew five years ago. Maybe even what you knew ten years ago, that's barely all you know now. Because you haven't set any goals, you haven't set any targets, you haven't been working towards them, it hasn't been a priority for you. 
And if that's how your life is, then you're never going to be making any improvements. So a person must have that goal and that target that he works for. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, spoke about this. And it has been said that one of the other things that can come into the issue of achieving your goals is financial. Because as we said, the reality of students and seeking knowledge, one of the aspects of that is to travel to the scholars and to go to the scholars and sit with them and learn with them. And so those types of affairs in traveling to seek knowledge, and even if you're not traveling here, having to buy books, a single book these days in English might be 20 pounds for 200 pages, it needs money to buy books and to travel. Those kinds of things require some finances. So al-bulgha is also something that could be in reference to finances for a student of knowledge. That you try to put aside what you can that will be needed in seeking knowledge. Even basics like pens and pads at the time of the Salaf it is mentioned. How some of them they were so uh, so poor, they were so poor that they had to sell their own garments and other possessions so that they could buy paper, they could buy paper to write on, they had to sell their garments and other possessions to have the basic few pennies as we say now to be able to buy some paper to write on. So a person tries to set aside a little bit here and there that will be his pot for seeking knowledge, whatever he needs, he needs to buy a book, he needs to buy some uh, uh, type of pad or whatever it might be, he wants to put something aside to travel out and go and see the scholars. You put aside a little bit that will help you and be a support for you in your seeking of knowledge in order to help you to achieve your goals that could also possibly come into the meaning of al-bulha. <clears throat> These are the first eight that the Shaykh he speaks about. The first eight from the targets and goals that a person needs to have, or the first eight foundations. <coughs> After that, there are two which remain, the ninth and the tenth. There are ten in total that the Sheikh speaks about here. So what remains afterwards are the ninth and the tenth. We'll go over those in more detail in the final session next week, but to mention them briefly for now. Ninthly, accompanying a Sheikh accompanying a qualified teacher, accompanying a teacher, a qualified teacher who is going to be able to teach you. That is something which is needed in seeking knowledge and at the primary level, the meaning of that is of course the scholars. At the most basic level, that means to attempt to uh, accompany the scholars, to sit with them, to learn from them. Knowledge is taken from the mouths of the scholars. And so for a student to base his seeking of knowledge upon a sound basis, it is upon him to sit with the scholars and to take knowledge from them. So his seeking of knowledge is upon correct foundations. He pronounces the words of Qur'an and Hadith accurately, with no grammatical mistakes or mispronunciation in it. And he understands the correct and intended understanding. And on top of all that, he benefits from the scholar in terms of their manners etiquettes and piety and he must avoid his book becoming his sheikh 
for indeed the one whom his book is his shaykh then his mistakes will be a lot and what he gets right will be little that is in reference to somebody who self studies only and makes his book his shaykh his book is his shaykh he never goes and sits with the scholars he just studies himself reads himself his books are his shaykh then that type of person will end up with more mistakes than what he gets right so this is the ninth one that we'll start with properly next time to finish off the final section in the book and that is going to be accompanying a scholar in your act of seeking knowledge and then the tenth one is going to be perseverance over a lengthy period of time knowledge is not sought in a year or two years or even three years or four years it takes years and years and years of study and as we will come to see inshallah in the tenth one there is no limit to those years a student continues seeking knowledge all his life up until he dies there is no five years or six years and ten years or twelve years and that's it you've become a student now you've become a sheikh now a person continues with his seeking of knowledge till death so we'll cover those final two next time inshallah ta'ala next weekend we'll finish this book off we'll stop on